we hit almost to the halfway point in this game. Slowly walking down the altar. Ah, quick, quick. All right. One of these days, I don't know when, I'm going to actually move to the right instead of always going to the left. But not today. Let's see what we got here. Someone who's not put together properly. Um, um, pretty. We already did that one. That was the Hall of the Night Sky. And then a nice symmetrical circle-y thingy. can't seem to climb the stairs by actually going towards the stairs, so I will climb the stairs by going in the direction that's sort of not quite at the stairs. And what's the first thing I'm going to do when I get... I must have really long arms if I'm capable of operating all this equipment. Twelve times Condra grows but twelve times does she wane. Such eternal symmetry should be reflected here. Opposing tokens placed upon these frames must never meet upon the wheels of time. Twelve times may they wane. Well, there's twelve of these little notches here. <laughs> and... He sounds like he was actually giving really good hints. Oh, this turns everything. So the things that stood out to me were symmetry and 12. And this thing can rotate. Well, 12 what? What do these things actually do? They give me a ball, okay. So I can place it on one of the discs and spin it around. The direction these discs are spinning this particular disc is moving this direction. This particular disc is moving this direction. One of the things the oracle said was they're not allowed to meet. Does that mean that if I put a ball here and these spin, will that cause a problem because they'll... Oh, I can put it back if I want to. Well, that... It does cause a problem. Okay. So, our goal should be to put all 12 balls onto these discs in such a way that they all spin freely without hitting each other. Now, the oracle mentions symmetry, but we can't exactly put one ball on every single disc because we already see that disc is bad. What about the other disc behind us? Um, that disc won't turn and hit the other ball. It will turn the opposite direction, but they'll be synced together. Like, the ball here means the ball will be here. If there's a ball here, the ball will be here, and they'll let me actually see if that's true. Yeah, they spin. Yep. Because the numbers are the same. Even if it doesn't hit immediately, it hits... Bef oh, I can't... Oh, shoot. So if I screw up, I have to restart the entire puzzle. Alright. I'm just going to put this here. And we want to try to have symmetry, but we can't use either of those. Now... There is a symmetry here with these three against those other three. If we think of it like that, we can think of the three here as being all offset from each other. They're all separated by a single disc. So we can put a ball there and there's no chance for them to hit anything because there's nothing on any of the adjacent discs. So they'll be able to spin freely, but we can't put it on a disc now. Now we've turned that, maybe we can free up these other discs on that other set of three. So, see how that works. If I put a ball, if I put the ball here, hmm, let's pay attention to this location while I spin. Because we know we can't undo. So if we screw up, we have to restart the puzzle. And I don't want to have to do that. So 
Let's pay attention to this spot as it turns. Barely misses and comes back. Sounds good. Let's do it. Now, if this is as symmetrical as I think it is, well, um, this one will be okay. And we should be able to place a ball on the other one because if that one is offset by one, this one will be offset as well. It will miss that other ball just barely. Once again, I'm following the little location I was going to put the ball, confirming it would be okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. And it would appear that this symmetry will work, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, place balls on the two discs. All right, if symmetry is to be believed, that means we're probably going to have to hit the um, top one, the bottom left, and the bottom right again. But, oh, look how beautiful that is. They're spinning. All right, this is where we just were. Now, we can't put a ball on the top one right now. We are going to have to spin things around a little bit. So now let's see if that area right there is free. It is. If this symmetry thing works out, then these two areas should also be free. So let's pay attention to that one. Just barely missing, but it's okay. Let's pay attention to this one. Once again, it is also okay. Oh shoot, we're almost done. We just have to place three more, which means two will be on each one. Just doing one last confirmation. All right, now let's be careful here. This is the last thing we don't want to screw it up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't want to do that. All right, is that a good spot? No, it'll hit the other one immediately. What about this? Is this a good spot? Looks like it. That means that these three should be good spots too. So, I say we should go for it. I'm not even going to do the one at the bottom. I'm going to assume the logic works, and it does. Now that worked out because of the symmetry. But what if we didn't do things symmetrical? I'm going to actually not click that jewel, and I'm going to reset the puzzle. Yay! Okay, it doesn't reset the jewel. That's one point that I wanted to make. So you can still play around with it. Can we take a look at another way we could have solved this? We could have just went linearly. Be like, okay, move that by one, place it there, and then so on and so forth. But we run the risk of make, of getting us into a situation where there are no spaces to place a ball. And the reason why is because there are five slots, and it is there's a potential four different slots that could be a problem because of the... Let me just show you. All right, so this area is bad. This area will always be bad. And when we place the ball here, we're going to make another area always bad. And if we place, let me try to see, these two here are going to make a problem. And then these two here are going to make a problem. So we've rendered two of the five uh, things on that disc inoperable. All right, let me place one there. And that means 
that we're going to render this space inoperable, this space inoperable, and then a different space inoperable. That's the point. It's three unique spaces. If we place a ball here, we're going to render this one. That's four unique spaces that are inoperable, which means that only one of the five spaces can actually hold a, um, a thing. If we were to finish the rest of the puzzle, we'd be stuck there, and there would only be one space that a ball could be put on. Because, let's follow that line. See, that thing is going to succeed. Okay, so that's good. Now this one will fail. The next one will turn around and fail too. So, okay, let's go through this slowly. That fails, so let's take a look at that one up here. That fails because it smacks against that one. So, um... Let's move and take a look at another one. This one right here. That will smack against the one coming right next to it, but that one will smack against that one. So the problem is we have four of the five spaces taken up. There's no way to place the ball in. We're screwed. By doing it symmetrically, we are making it so that one ball from each disc on each side hits at the same time and that there's one space on the main disc that is hit twice which means that two of the five spaces, not just one of the five spaces, are open for other balls. So that's the danger we run into if we attempt to just solve this puzzle linearly. Well, we have our jewel, and I'm just gonna mess some stuff up because why not? Very, very slowly walking to the door for some reason. I'm really glad that it puts us really close to the altar chamber. Just a few clicks and we are already there. I'll walk up the altar slowly to build the anticipation. The tasks resolved so far marked here are 10.